Bow Hunt or Die is being brought to you by Matthews, Lost Camo, Lone Wolf Portable Tree Stands, Hunter Safety System, Heartland Wildlife Institute, New Archery Products, Tinks, Carbon Express, Stealth Cam, Moose Utility Division, Lacrosse Footwear, Scent Blocker, Pine Ridge Archery, HHA Sports, Stick and Pick, and the Can Cooker. Welcome to the season finale of Bowhunter Die. Justin, season four is finally in the books. Yeah, and it was a very long season for a lot of us. But you know, Todd, you know, looking back, it was a really, really a good year. I mean, all things considered, the year started out great. I mean, our guys shot an absolute pile of turkeys That's earlier this sure. year. You know, everybody had a blast during the off season. The get together was, you know, huge. We had a good time there. We rolled right into deer season. Started off with a bang. Yeah. You know, we had, you know, both Chad and Dean putting down great bucks. Then we had a little bit of a lull there for a while. I think we were getting a little nervous. Guys weren't shooting any deer. We were getting real nervous there, Justin. I mean, I, I know it's kind of interesting how you left out shooting the blind, but we'll, 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 we'll keep going. That's we'll all the way that, back to we'll, turkey season. We'll, right? we'll let that fly. <laughs> but no, I mean, you're right, Justin. If things started off slow, but they definitely ended up picking up in the end. And it's kind of weird. You know, we were talking about this yesterday and how it was kind of like... You know, it was like humps, like watching the stock market or something like that. I yeah. mean, we started off with a couple of good kills right away, and we're like, wow, what is going on in Wisconsin this year? Then things were dead slow in Illinois. The late, the, the rut was late. Then all of a sudden we had deer hitting the ground, and then late season was steady all the way through. Yeah, I mean, we hit about November 10th, and it was like, all right, what's going on here? You know, these guys aren't shooting deer. We're just not seeing them. And all of a sudden, you know, within a couple of days, we had a bunch of people shooting deer. So, you know, this episode is really going to be kind of a, a highlight right. reel, if you will, uh, of this past season's hunt. So let's start off with uh, some turkey floppage and uh, check out some of these hunts. Well, Todd, hopefully we can have a repeat, you know, on success for turkey hunts, you know, this year, excluding myself, of course, because the only thing that I managed to kill was was the blind, as you guys just saw. Hey, at least it wasn't your blind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. At least it wasn't my blind. So, uh, you know, turkeys aside, you know, we kind of go through the summer. Like we mentioned earlier, we have the bowhunting.com get together, right. uh, which this year is going to be June 7th. We really hope that everybody can make it out. Northern Illinois. It's an entire day full of fun. Obviously, we'll have more information as that gets closer. And before you move on that, Justin, I mean, I think one of the things I hear the most is sometimes people are just, I don't know, afraid to show up because they think it's really competitive. And, right. and you know, guys, it's not about who can shoot the best and so forth. I mean, it's about coming out, bringing your bows, letting arrows fly, and just having a good yeah. time. So seriously, if you're on the fence about coming because you're thinking it's just big competitive shoot, it's not. It's about having a great time, meeting other bow hunters, and we've had people come from, from pretty far distances. We yeah. actually, every year, we give away a trophy rock and whoever traveled the furthest. Yeah. So. so if you're coming from like California or Alaska, maybe you'll win this year. Right. So we hope to see everybody out at that. Uh, next up, Todd, we're going to jump into two uh, early season Wisconsin whitetail hunts, which you know, started the season out with a bang, and right. honestly, they're probably two of my favorite hunts from this year. Good uh, hunts. We've got Chad Stillman, uh, his first ever filmed hunt for Bowhunter Die, yep. and then uh, we go into Dean Krieger with uh, one of the biggest bucks of the year for our team, so let's check them out now.
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He is down. He's a buck we watched earlier. He circled around behind us. He just came in. I didn't even see him. Melissa, God bless her. She's like, he's right in front of you. He came in at, he was like 30 yards. I drilled him. He went 50 yards. That kill zone ate him up. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I'm freaking out. Boy, or die, baby. Stick with us. We're going to go get this buck. I don't believe that just happened. I'm dedicating that buck to my dad. It's gonna be 15 years. I lost my dad to a tree stand accident. And uh, right here, we didn't have hunter safety system back then. We do now. That one's for my dad. What a buck. You know, Justin, after watching Dean's hunt, I mean, that was by far one of the most powerful hunts that we've had, I think, ever when mm -hmm. it comes to our shows. You know, I got to tell you, I mean, I've been friends now with Dean for, for many years here, and, I, and I'll tell you what, he never, I had no idea about what happened with his father. And I tell you what, when I actually saw that footage before we actually aired it, I mean, it really sent my, it sent, it sent goosebumps down my yeah. arms for sure. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it's an extremely powerful message. And it's an unfortunate thing that it takes a tragedy sometimes for so many people's eyes to be open to, you know, the potential dangers of hunting without, uh, you know, a safety oh. system. So, I mean, that was definitely, like you said, probably the most powerful hunt that we've ever had on our show. Had the most comments on Facebook, on YouTube, yep. on our forum. Uh, you know, guys were really touched, which I think, you know, was, was Dean's whole reason for bringing that story up was, you know, if I can even help one person yeah. out there, you know, I'm doing my job. And, and I'll be honest with you, I think there was a guy on our forum who came and said, you know, I watched your show. I started wearing a safety harness because I've never done it. And literally, this is a true story. like I within mean, a couple days, he had an accident in a yep. tree stand and potentially saved his life. So, I mean, just a great story all around. Obviously, Todd, you know, tree stand safety is something we take very seriously, right. something we, we talk a lot about. We hope everybody else uh, out there is, is listening to that message and wearing their hunter safety system. Yeah, well, and, and, and with hunter safety systems, Justin, I mean, there is a company that is 100% dedicated to making sure that people are safe in the tree. And I'll tell you what, these guys have got great products. They have multiple different harnesses. This year at the ATA show, uh, one of my favorite products and your favorite products, they have the kids model now. Yep. I mean, let's be honest, guys, you're getting your kids introduced to hunting. What's the first thing you want to do is show them that and make sure that they're going to know that they're going to be safe in the tree. I, I know as a young adult, when I was out hunting, you know, we just didn't have the, the stuff available. I mean, I remember my dad would be like, okay, see you later. And I, I mean, I was climbing trees and sitting on pieces of wood. I mean, phew, how crazy was that? Yeah, What's that? yeah, it's amazing how times have, have certainly changed and our eyes have opened up to tree stand safety. So, uh, you know, with those early season hunts out of the way, we kind of headed into October. You know, hopes were high, thinking, you know, season started off great, bucks are going to be hitting the ground, and not a lot happened. It was kind of just birds chirping there for a while. But, you know, the rut finally did kick in. It was a little bit late this year. Uh, but when it kicked in, man, it was great. A lot of bucks up on their feet, a lot of deer hit the ground. So we're going to take you back now to November and some of our favorite deer hunts from this fall. So let's check those out now. Welcome to Bow Hunter Down, baby.
ねmoment bow hunter die string. I ain't telling you he's gonna come all the way out here. But... Great for 21 yards. <laughs> Look at these bad boys. Right there. That's why you have to use big horns. Couldn't be happier getting this deer. That was a hell of an exciting hunt this morning with that doe come down through there and all them bucks running her, so just couldn't be happier. Stay away from that shoulder. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. Bow hunter die.
bull hunter die. <laughs> Hunter die guys. Todd, like I said earlier, you know, the rut was a little late this year. We we're getting worried, but, you know, right around that November 8th, it seems like somebody flipped a switch, the buck started moving, and as you guys saw right there, we had a lot of good deer up in their feet, and our team yeah. managed to kill some really good bucks, which just goes to show you that even when times are tough and we know deer numbers are down in a lot of places, if you hunt hard and you hunt smart, there's still some good deer out there to shoot. Yeah, I, I mean, Justin, I agree with you. I mean, you know, this year with EHD, I mean, a lot of states, you know, are dealing with chronic wasting disease, drought. I mean, there's all kinds of different factors that just came into play this year. I don't know if I even want to call well, it the perfect well, storm. And, and now we got this winter, you know, that we're dealing with with these, you know, sub zero right. temperatures and snow on the ground so certainly not going to make things any easier for those deer out there. No I mean I can tell you I know that I had quite a bit of food on my property and literally I was looking for some antlers this past weekend and I was walking row by row it is amazing how much I mean, it's, it's gone I mean I, mean, I can't believe yeah. how much they've already consumed you start getting 10 15 20 deer moving into an area they wipe it out quick. Yeah well hopefully mother nature lets up on us here pretty soon and uh, hopefully spring's right around the corner and some of these deer are going to make it through for next year. So, you know, guys, that's all the hunting action we've got for this show. Uh, of course, Todd, like always, we want to take a couple seconds to thank some of the people who sent in their photos for this week's show. Jim Davis. George Gagov. Eric Jensen. And Ashton Jones. Hey, if you'd like to see yourself right here on another exciting episode of Bowhunter Die, visit our website in the upper right-hand corner and submit us your photos. You can also do it on Facebook as well. Justin. With that being said, this will wrap up Season 4 for Bowhunter Die. I know we've already started talking about Season 5. We've got some great plans, of course, as always. Yeah. And I know I've got a couple deer that are still alive, so I'm hopeful they're going to make it. Yeah. And uh, hopefully I'm going to find their antlers here soon. So how about you? Yeah, well, I mean, preparations have, have already begun. We're already thinking about, you know, stand locations for next year, yep. food plots, getting out and, and, you know, still running some trail cameras to see what deer uh, are still out there during the winter. So it seems like even though the season's over, the hunting aspect of it never really right. ends. Uh, I know myself uh, this year I'm probably going to put forth a little even more effort than I normally do because I really want to try to end of this two year slump that I'm on for not, not shooting a deer. So I got some, some tricks up my sleeve. I'm gonna hunt Todd's <laughs> property a little well, bit. That's great. Next year when he's not around. So we do have actually some great ideas, I think for season five, Bowhunter Die, a little bit more behind the scenes action, uh, both here in the studio and in the office, yep. as well as out in the field, giving you guys a little bit more in-depth look at some of the properties where we hunt, some of the locations where guys have shot deer last year. Addresses and GPS locations adjusting the spots. <laughs> yeah, so. Hopefully you guys will have better luck than I do. So, you know, we got uh, a lot of good stuff in store for Season 5, so make sure you check back. That's going to start sometime in the spring. So that's all for Season 4, Bowhunter Die. We will see you guys next year. And hey, one of the greatest things about our show, you know what? 
They're all available for you all the time. All you need to do is log onto the website or get the Roku out and download them to your iPad, whatever your favorite method is, and you, you can watch all the back episodes. You can even go back all the way to season one. In the meantime, don't forget to check out facebook.com forward slash bowhunting for daily updates, news, photos, and other exciting information. We want to hear your opinions and your stories, so join us now and like us on Facebook. As always, Justin Zara is along my side. Justin, wow, what? I'm Todd Graff. I'm Todd Graff. And I'm Justin Zara. <laughs> I'm Todd Graff. Oh, right now? I'm Todd Graff. And I'm Justin Zarr. I'm Todd Graff. I'm Justin Zarr. Man. <coughs> I'm Todd Graff. I'm Justin Zarr. <laughs> and Welcome to another exciting episode of Ball Hunter Die. I'm Todd Graff. And I'm Justin Zarr. Well, I just don't like the way it sounds. Does that sound, does that sound, does that sound good?